beach fishing rigs for springtime. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. I'm down here with my buddy William, who is also a Rogers fishing member. We've come down to the beach, we're going to do some beach worming, and then we're going to, straight after we've caught the beach worms, we're going to go fishing, and I'm going to be discussing beach fishing rigs and just teaching you everything that I think when I'm making a fishing rig, explaining them to William Great. as well. And we're looking forward to catching a few yummy fish while yeah. we're doing that. So if you're enjoying the videos, make sure that you like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and we're going to get started. Looking forward to it. Thanks, awesome. Roger. So this is all just leftover stuff in my freezer. Yeah. It's all just smelly fish matter, yeah. which that they would like. What I normally do is I just um, go like that yep. until I get to the bottom. And if I'm going to put fish in there, like I hold it like that, like a puppet, I guess, I want to put the fish in head first, yeah. like that. So what, how many pillies have we got? We've got one, two, three. So I put a couple of pilchards in there. Then we've got some of these prawnies. We might as well chuck them in as well. We can hold that one. I'll do the same with this guy. Put them there like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Usually after each session, I just tip these out. I don't, um, I don't keep them because yeah. the pilchards just turn to mush. Yeah. And you don't leave one out to hold against the worm. You, they just. No. Grab through the through the uh, stocking. Through the stocking, yeah. Now I don't need that guy, so I'm going to feed the fish with him. So something will eat that. <laughs> now, generally, when you're doing it, the the worms are attracted by the scent. So the idea is we want to cover as much area as we can yep. for that scent to go back. So what I like is you want to wait till the wave washes right up like this. And then I'm going to put it, I'm going to drag this in the water like a full arc all the way across from one side to the other. Keep making sure that I keep this in the water. I don't want it to skip over out of the water. So for example, if I'm doing it here, I'm dragging it through the water. I'm dragging it through the water. I'm wanting to just to get that scent. Then as the water goes back now, I'm looking to see if a worm comes up. And you're looking that far down as well? I'm watching the water as it goes all right. the way. Right, okay. Because a worm make, they won't come up until the water sort of disappears. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're gonna get an opportunity yep. now. Yep. The waves are gonna go back. Yep. So look, I know he's there. So look, I'm waving this right up here. Oh, there he is. I'm not near him. No, I can see this wave coming. But look now, I'm gonna bring this to him where he can grab it. See where my fingers are? Look. I'm going to slowly move my fingers into the sand, and then I'm just going to tighten my grip like that. Oh my goodness. And pull him out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so you, would, you moved quite slowly the whole time. You could see how much time, yeah. I, how much time I had then. Look at that. See, that, that's, that'll give you two nice baits. Yeah, that, lovely. That will catch dinner. dinner. Look at his head there. <laughs> Look at great. Let's go over here. Well, I know, I'm pretty sure there's one here. Yeah, look. Okay, I can hear a wave coming. I'm gonna have to uh, get him. <laughs> I could, I could just knew that wave was there. Yeah. Okay. He did come up for the juice. Here comes a little wave. Oh, my fingers are gone cold. I think my um, my hands are a little cold. See, the waves on this beach are quite large. Yeah, how are they? A bit exposed. So right now I'm gonna be, while I'm waving, I'm not looking at this. I'm watching to see where the worm is. Now, that was three waves that went past and he never came up, so. Move on. Forget about it. One more go and then we're gonna yeah. go and get a hot coffee. Yeah. We're gonna get a hot coffee before and something to eat before we go fishing. Okay. <laughs> Despite the challenges when we were worming, and I mean, because it was bitterly cold, also, there, we had to wait quite a lot for the gaps in between the waves to be able to catch the worms. I still caught a heap of worms, even though I was flipping freezing. So now we've come back down to the beach um, in a slightly different spot. We're not gonna fish where we caught the worms because it's very exposed. The waves are much bigger. 
We've only come a short distance. I can actually see where I'm standing, where we were worming from here. So we've really just turned around and now we're facing north. And yeah. it's a completely different picture, isn't yeah. it, Will? They're massive waves I can see down there, whereas well, behind us here, they're much calmer. Oh, it's much more pleasant. It's much more handleable. The wind is blowing in my face, but when we're fishing, the wind will be at our back. Yeah. And I'm going to walk down the beach just a little bit because right here, it's one of those situations where you've got no real structure on the beach, especially as the tide gets higher. You can really just see that it's like a lake. And when the bigger waves come in, they're just gonna really just crash on the shore. But the further south, sorry, the further north that I walk on this beach, the bigger the waves will get. So what I would like to do is just walk down the beach a little bit away from where we've got this edge where there's just waves breaking on the edge. So, so there's a little bit more movement, a little bit more stirring in the water, which is really only in this case about 150 metres we're going to walk down the beach and the waves will get a fraction bigger. There'll just be a little bit more action and we're going to go down there and have a fish down there and we're going to use the worms that we caught this afternoon. Awesome, so excited. And see what we can catch. So we're going to start heading down there. We, I'm pretty sure we'd catch fish here. Yeah. But you know... Yeah, massive surf down there. Yeah, that? see see the difference? Because yeah. what, what's happening... Coming off around the head. ...is we're coming out of the protection sure. yep. of the headland. Headland, yeah. So you don't want to be up there in that. No, I don't want to be right up there. Because you know what? If we were up there, we'd, our baits would be landing in all the white mush. Yeah. But I just would like to be a bit... Because if, if we were going to fish right here, mm. you know, we'd be casting out 10 metres. Right. We wouldn't want to be casting our lines right out the back. We'd actually want to just lob them just in here, yeah. right on the edge. So we'll just have a look. See this wave here? See how that's starting to break out a little bit yeah, further? that's where you want to be. Okay. So we're just going to come just past so, the um, edge here. You see, um, like I went down to the beach the other day and there were dolphins all out there. I thought, right, well, I'm not going to catch any fish. Is that pretty true? No, not? I mean, I, I used to think that was the case, but I know some of the local fishermen around here, they like the dolphins. Oh, really? And they actually cast towards them. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's any, do you think it's true? Well, the dolphins are feeding on different things. Yeah. And they might, they might chop up fish and leave little leftover bits. And that's true. The other fish will swim along behind yeah. them and want to yeah. pick up the leftovers. And what if there's lots of weed in the water? Do you think that, is that a bad sign? Uh, yeah, you don't, you want to actually, if there's weed, you pack up and go somewhere uh, else. Yeah. I heard that so let's, um, let's stop here. I think we're probably just about far enough down the beach. We get, we've got a little bit more wide water, even though it's not breaking out very far. Look, there's one piece of weed there. Yeah. But if we look in the water, we can't really see much in the way of yeah. weed. So I think we'll fish here. Or really, from this point yeah. along um, here. So how far out would you cast beyond that wave there? See the wave now? Yeah. yeah. About there. Okay. Not that, not not that far. far. No. Well, you cast it out a bit and then gradually wind it in, but you could catch fish, you know, along the edge yeah. here. So we'll give it a go here. Okay. Can you see his fangs? I see can, the, yeah. See, look, the black fangs? Look at that. You watch those fangs. Are... Oh, he's oh, trying to bite it. me. Look at that. Yeah. You watch, here he comes again. Oh! Okay, bring it up. I'm just going to take the sand off him so we can see. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the thing is? The worms have got fangs, but they actually can't penetrate your skin. Hmm. You can put one there and let him try and get you, and they'll go rah, rah, like that. I can't get him. And the bigger the worm, the bigger the fangs. You watch, here he'll come with the fang, fangs again. He'll open it up, and then I'll just I'll feed him. I'll feed him a hook. Now I'm threading him up at the hook, and look at that. When we get to the hook, I'm going to hold it here, yeah. and I'm just going to pull that. And look over, over, the, the, over the top of the hook. Yeah. How long? How far up will you go? Oh, I'll go. I'll go a good inch or so. Look, because the thing is, yeah. then you go like that. Look, that's where the little hook is. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to chop that off like that. But yeah. look at look at that. And do you expose the barb or not? No, no, no. no, no you just leave the like barb within the into the worm. Within okay. the worm. All right. And then I'm going to use the second half of the worm. Yep. Yeah. And see the same thing, I'm yeah, just going to thread, thread it down the middle. Yep. Now the, the, the part of the worm where his head is is quite tough yeah. and it stays on the hook quite well. So this is a little bit softer. Yeah. 
and I'm going to leave that like that. Look at that. So you've got those two worm baits. Yeah. So we are fishing with uh, beach worms. And essentially what I have here is what is commonly known as a paternoster rig. I have my line set up so that I have two, two baits. I have a three-way swivel with some line to a worm bait. Then I have sufficient gap between this swivel and the next one so that if I lift this bait up, those two baits, baits won't meet or they won't touch, they won't reach. So then I've got the same thing down there, a second one. Then my sinker, which is at the bottom, is fixed. It's not a running sinker. So typically with a pattern oster rig, you have a sinker on the bottom and then you, and you can have multiple baits up your line. In this case, we've got two worm baits. Um, it's always exciting when you fish with light line, if you catch one or more than one fish, you get a double header. Yeah. That makes things interesting. Now today I've, I've actually got a, a main line of 20 pound line, but I've made this whole leader of 10 pound fluorocarbon because you tend to get more bites with lighter line. So if we hook a couple of decent fish, it just means we've got a little bit, a little, be a little bit more careful in bringing them in. And what, uh, what hook do you use? Um, the hook I've got on here is a size, it's a long shank hook and it's a size 1.0. Okay. So we've got two of those. So we're not going to cast this out all that far. I just want to get it just beyond where the waves are breaking. I don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere. I want to be along the edge. So we're going to cast, cast that out and William's going to fish with this and then I'm going to rig up the other line. I'm going to just let you fish while I really because you, you know how what a bite feels yep, like and what to do. Yep. So look, see how really in between when there's a big wave, like, you know, there's, it's pretty much green water almost all the way to the edge. Yep. Fish like to come and, because when the waves stir things up, they, they stir up bits of food and stuff. So they come in and sniff them on. Mm -hmm. So you watch how far I'm going to cast. I'm yep. just going to flick it, not very far. So if I cast it out, say, there, yeah, just like you can see where that landed. Yeah. I mean, just kind of about where the waves are making. I'd stand there and hold it for a little while. I mean, if you just fish with it like that for a little while, otherwise you could wind it a metre. You could even bring it in a little bit closer, but I'd just leave it there for the, the time yeah. being. Yeah, good. Just hang there, maybe wind it a bit. And yep. If you've been out there for a little while and you haven't had a bite, cast it out again, yep. left it to dry or whatever. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> okay. I think it's probably a salmon. Feels like it. Just keep your rod up a little bit higher. Okay. We're just going to have to be a little bit careful on the edge. How's your drag? Is it? I've tightened it up a bit. Before, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's going down the beach. Yeah. How cool. Lovely. It's fun. <laughs> He's going like his head down that way. I know. <laughs> now remember, because you've only got that 10 pound leader, yeah. you'll need to use the momentum of the a wave. wave. Yeah. If it goes to suck down now, be careful. Ah. Uh, yeah. See how he went like that? Yeah. See what's happened there. That was quite a large salmon. See the big salmon. See, look, yeah. um, the hook's gone. Yeah. The yeah, I, I tried to let it, let it off a bit. That was a good lesson. Yeah. Because... It was a big salmon. Yeah, it was a big salmon and the line is light. And where the wave sucks back, there's a lot of pressure and you really have to kind of... Yeah. If your drag was a bit lighter... Yeah, I tried to loosen have, it off, but not fast yeah, enough. Yeah, it could have pulled some line out. And then when you wait for the momentum of a wave yeah. to bring it up... Yeah. So we'll just put another hook on there. But I think, you know, how long did you have your line in the water? A minute. A minute? Yeah, not long, maybe anyway. Maybe two. Yeah. Not long. He was, not a, he was, he was a, a big fish. salmon, yeah. Yeah, he was. So oh, so we'll... At least that big. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put another hook on and then get you back out there. Right. Yeah. 
He's pulling line. He's pulling a bit of line. Oh, he's dragging it out. <laughs> Mate, I don't even have time to rig up my line. Sorry. <laughs> now your drag is still going, so it's a decent fish, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, yeah, I, I um so I think what we'll do. Yeah, they, they tend to try and go sideways. Let's just see where he is, because last time he got caught halfway up. Yeah. And then the wave went back, and then the drag wasn't uh, loose enough. Should I loosen the drag off more? Yeah. Should I loosen it off more? No, I think you're all right. But we just have to be aware of where he is. Yeah. And then when there's sufficient opportunity, not, not yet, not yet. And keep your rod up a bit higher. Let's just watch. OK, now walk forward, walk forward. That's it, because if there's too much pressure... OK, let's just wait for the next wave. The next big wave, this wave here, if you can try and bring him up with the wave, no, don't do it now, you have to wait. Pulling the line out. Oh, yeah, okay. Walk forward, because you just want to minimise that pressure at all times. Yeah. Otherwise, that light line will part again, and don't try and lift him out of the water. See this next little wave? Yeah. Try and gently bring him with the wave, if possible. Just gently, uh, keep coming because this wave's coming. Okay, woohoo! <laughs> Whoa. They're not small, are they? That's the biggest one I've ever caught. Wow, well, there you go. Look so that's at that. A Australian salmon? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, he's a hey? Decent sized fish, isn't he? Yeah, he's a ripper. You want to, I'll hold the rod and you can pick him up. You've got to hold he's on a, tight. He's a fat fish. Just watch out for that other hook, yeah. Whoops. Yeah, he's a decent sized fish. So, how long was your line in the water? Very long? Uh, two minutes. Not long. So, would you like to take him home to eat? Yeah, definitely. We'll Absolutely. bleed him and yeah, eat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How big do you reckon he is? Uh, he's probably um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, probably 55 centimetres long, yeah. and probably I would say. About two kilos, maybe? Yeah, he's a decent weight. Yeah, he's pretty chunky. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. All right, excellent. All right, we'll, we'll take him up. Yep. And then we can repeat. <laughs> two, two casts, almost two fish. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roger, you need to get out there and catch one. You go and do it, and I can re rig. No, it's all right, I'm almost finished. Uh, I mean, all I've got to do is throw a worm on, and you're ready to go. It was nice to have a good bit of a fight and a bit of a have to play him into the into the beach. They're a good fighting fish, these salmon, aren't they? They are, yeah. Now we may hook other species as well. Yeah. You know, I've found in this particular location that I've caught more big whiting at night right. than during the daylight hours. Certainly got some lovely whiting after dark. So you're ready to go? Yeah. Can I see how you um, lead him? Yeah, sure. Where's my knife? Now, William, this rod is lighter than the one that you've just been using, that you've hooked those last two fish on. So you're going to actually feel it even more. Right. <laughs> and if you hook a decent fish on this, it's going to be... Um, bending double. Bending double. I've rigged it up. It's, this rig is slightly different to the one that I've just done. Yes, it is. So I'm going to get you to hold the rod, William. The previous rig was a Paternoster rig. This is kind of like a combo. It's like, it's like a Paternoster rig, but it, the sinker is partly running. So what I've done is I have my top swivel with a worm bait on it. Then I've got a distance down to my bottom swivel, but I've actually got the, the sinker running in between the top swivel and the bottom swivel. So the sinker can run for that period. Then below that sinker, I just have a normal swivel going down to a bait. 
So essentially, with a Paternoster rig, both of the baits are suspended off the bottom because you've got your sinker on the bottom and then you've got your two baits coming up. With this one, we've got a bait that is suspended up off the bottom, but this bait is going to lie on the bottom, which just is a different dynamic. Because, so would that be more like a catch like a flathead? Well, possibly. Mm -hmm. So this bait will be just, this worm bait will just be wafting around on the bottom. And then I've also got one which is about two feet up, which is hanging in the mid water. Yeah, okay. Both work really well. So this is what you're going to do now. Just Brilliant. make sure that it's not caught around the tip. Yeah. And um, I'll take that for you. And I've, I've set the drag and go and have some fun. Right, thank you. <laughs> Oh, so look, I've been out last month up in Sydney where I live probably 15 times and I haven't even got bites. Uh, I think I caught a tiny little flathead, so, um, which I had to put back obviously. Uh, so virtually over six weeks. So to catch this lovely salmon today is very encouraging. <laughs> very encouraging. I think it must be the, uh, the Roger Osborne aura. <laughs> so it's great fun, really good. Isn't that rainbow beautiful? Oh, that's amazing. Look at all the pink hue under it. Oh, look at that. That's glorious. Just stunning. Oh, that How is good so is that? Good. That is good. How good is that? Okay, just hold on for a sec. Um, I'll get you to hold this, this one. I'm just going to just rearrange the worms a little bit on the hook. Right. See how that's got a little oh, bit it's hanging off? off. Yeah. yeah, so I'll just um, put that back on a bit. And I'm just going to go like that. And you can see where that landed. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. So that's that's how I do it. Okay, thank you. So you take that one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I'll have this one. All right. I might, go, I might cast on your left. All right. I think. And then we'll sit here and see what happens. And would you... Just let it sit there, or would you slowly wind it Oh yeah, I think I'd let it sit there for a minute. And then I'd maybe only pull it a metre, yep. and then wait, because I think fish are going to be sniffing along the edge. Yeah. That's what I think. Well, the so, other ones have been on, the, on close in. Yeah, so I'm going to toss over on a bit of an angle yeah. over that way. Oh, okay, I got one. Oh, wow, awesome. <laughs> now, remember that rod's a little bit lighter? It is, yeah. So it'll be a little bit more of a gentle play. And use the rod. The drag is set fairly light, so you should be all right. Whoa! Did you see him jump? Yeah, I did. You probably have to walk down a bit closer. Okay. It's always best to land the fish to be a little bit closer to the water. Yep. Hey, sorry, he's coming, coming down your way. He's still got a lot of energy. I think he's as big as the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's taking your top bait. But you, um... I'll fix it and you Okay, all right. If you go and look after him, yep. I'll, um... Well, William's having a great time. This is my first cast. Because <laughs> um, I've just been looking after William. And um, we did lose a rig set up. Lost the whole thing, so I had to re-rig again. Um, and I still hadn't even set up my own line. But it's actually really pleasant here. As I mentioned earlier, if we were on the other side facing into the wind, it would be a lot colder. The waves would be a lot bigger. Not that you wouldn't catch fish, but it would be a lot more challenging than coming and just really fishing in a protected part. So it's always, whenever you're fishing, you always have to look at what conditions do I have in front of me? Because really that's, you don't have control over the weather, so you have to make adjustments based on the weather, which is what we've done to come and choose this spot, which is just way more pleasant to fish. And we've been getting plenty of bites. At this stage, they've all been salmon, but certainly you can catch other fish using the worms that we're using for bait. We could catch brim, whining, trevally, whole, whole variety of things, which we still may do. Just going to toss this line back out again. 
because the waves are breaking close to shore, I'm not casting very far at all. It's really just a little lob. And the fish tend to patrol close to shore, up and down along the edge. Could I get some more worm? Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you hold this one, I'll put a worm on this one. There you go. Thank you. So, this is uh, easy fishing. Roger just throws it out for me and I reel it in. <laughs> it's cheating, but it's quite fun. This is only my um, second time fishing with a spinning reel. Um, all my reels are Aldi sidecast reels, so I'm not used to casting with this. I was surprised actually that the casting technique is as different as it seems to be. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm getting used to it. But it's a very smooth action. It was quite nice having this uh, spinning reel. Now, when you wind these in, you don't have your finger on the. Not when you actually wind it. Winding in. No. When I'm like Alvi, I do because I'm moving it side to side to spool it correctly. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. Now, when I'm standing here and waiting for a bite, I like to keep my finger on the line. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. Because I can just for, for feeling. feeling the bite. Yeah. So I like to keep my finger on the line, but if I'm getting bites and I'm winding, I'm not. Take it off here. Yeah, these are quite nice because they spool the, the line evenly onto the spool, whereas yeah. with my Albi side cast, I have to move my finger back and forth in order to have it distribute evenly on the reel. Yeah, that's right. Easier. It's like a manual one. Yeah. You've got to do that manually. I think I've, I'm pretty close to shore. I think I'll toss it out just a little bit further. Will you walk down a bit, you reckon? Yeah, I'll walk down and wind it in. And, Look at that rain cloud. I know. It's incredible. That's amazing. It's like a curtain. Some great fishing. Oh, you got a bit of a bite? You still got him or not? No. Just wait. He might come back. I'm going to wind in a At least we're dry here. It's very wet over there. Hang on, hang on. I'm getting a bite, I think. Am I? Yeah, I'm getting a bite. Uh, just let him take it. Whoa! Yep, got him. Oh, lovely. Whoa! Oh, it's taking a bit of line. Look. Oh. Yeah. I've only got 10 pound leader. If I've got two fish, that's going to be, um, I'll have to be really gentle. Hey, um, I'll just walk past you, because I think he's heading this way. Comes a big wave. Well, not that big, but, you know. Oops. I just lost the fish. It got off. I'm just thinking, you know, I had two hooks on here, two rigs, two hooks. I've lost both. I'm pretty sure I had two salmon on. And what happens sometimes if you hook two fish on a light double hookup like this is that they could be fighting and competing in different directions because they're both trying to fight and escape and they end up breaking the line. So I've actually lost both of my hooks and both of the fish. So I have to re-rig. That was good. Nice cast. Yeah, yeah. Well, since you showed me how to do it, much easier. You know, with those fish I had before, yeah. I hardly put, I was being gentle because I knew, I had a feeling there was two fish. Yeah. So I was, I knew I'd have to baby it in. Yeah. But I think the problem was is if they do fight in opposite directions. Yeah. Then what do you, what do you think there was salmon? Yeah, I think I probably had two decent salmon on. And that I mean if I had even a 15 pound litre instead of 10, yeah. I probably would have got them in. You would have? Yeah. Or well, certainly if I had 20 pound, yeah. it wouldn't be an issue. But by going with a lighter litre, you catch more types of fish? Yeah, right? well you more likely to catch 
whiting and brim. Yeah. Um, but you risk when you hook bigger fish like salmon. Losing them at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just, that's why I went lighter, because I thought, well, you know, because you can catch anything here. And I thought, well, go lighter, because we might catch a few different things. Yeah. And, um, yeah, all good. Wonderful. So beautiful. I just think some of that scenery is dramatic. It doesn't matter. It's really dramatic. You know, I had um, <laughs> I had those bites, you know. Yeah. I haven't had any bites for a while, but I was waiting. And that's usually what happens if, if you hook one fish and you've got two baits. When you're fishing for whiting and you're yeah. using two baits, you hook one and then you leave it. Right. Because there's another bait dangling, dangling around, around and one of the other ones will come and grab it huh. and, then you, and then you get two. Is that what you did with that last one? Well, I did pause because I was getting the bites. Yes, and it was so whack whack and I was waiting that. and waiting. I'm waiting, so I think that's why both baits got taken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we get you know, once more, we'll get four fish and <laughs> <laughs> that'd be good. Well, the last um, session, I, the last time I went fishing, I got a double hook up. I was using heavier line though. So what do you reckon, um, William? How's the day been? Oh, it's been awesome. I learned how to uh, catch beach worms and of course some great fish here. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. that sunset or that rainbow and sky. Very dramatic weather yeah. conditions. And um, getting cold now, but yeah, yeah. Good day. So we've had an awesome time. Just picked the best of the conditions, taking home some fish to eat. So thanks for watching again. I really appreciate it. I know by all of the comments that so many people are uh, benefiting from the instructions. So I'm really happy about that. Look forward to seeing you next week in another video. Catch you then.